All right, everybody with me? Chapter four, section one, we're gonna do this in two parts. It's kind of like a review of what we have been doing. We're always gonna to try to factor first. And then if we can't, we're gonna to have to use the P over Q, our fundamental theorem of algebra. So when you guys look at this, we've talked about all this stuff before. You guys have seen all this kind of stuff. There's different kinds of solutions that you can have. You can have real solutions. You can have imaginary solutions. You can have rational, which are pretty. You can have irrational, which are not pretty, like the square root of two. But one of the biggest things to remember is how can you determine how many solutions you have? How many zeros? How many answers? How do you know? Just by looking at a polynomial. The highest, the highest exponent. Yep, the highest exponent will tell you that's how many zeros you have. They may not all be real. They may not all be pretty. But you will have, God bless you, you will have that highest number. That's the fundamental theorem of algebra. All right, so let's just talk about some things here. <clears throat> if you are asked to find the number of solutions, remember solutions or zeros mean the exact same thing. You can also call them roots. You can also call them x-intercepts. So if I look at question A, how many answers should I have for A? Three. How do you know there's three? Because the highest exponent is three. Don't get fooled. Sometimes things aren't written in standard form. God bless you. So then <clears throat> you have to always, God bless you, look for the highest exponent, not just the first one. So in the second question, look, you see how they ask for solutions here? Here they ask for zeros. That, thing, that means the exact same thing. How many answers or zeros or solutions should you have in letter B? Four. Good, because the highest exponent you see is four. Does that make sense, everybody? You guys should really remind yourself about that because sometimes you'll have multiplicity, sometimes you'll have imaginary ones, but you're always going to be able to tell how many solutions you have by the highest exponent. So let's look at example two. <coughs> if you look at example two, it says find the zeros. Find all of the zeros. Doesn't say the real ones, doesn't say the imaginary, it says find all of them. So how many do you know that you have to find? There's five. All right, you, there are five answers hidden in here. This is not a problem that we can just factor quickly and then be done with it. There's five terms. We can't group it. There's no GCF. So we have to do, do you guys remember P over Q? That's the factors of the last number, plus or minus. So what are the factors of eight? One, two, four, and eight, correct? And then what do we do with those? How do we discover the first zero? What do we have to do with P over Q? Synthetic division, good. I'm gonna start with one. When we do our synthetic division, guys, you write out the coefficients. Remember, everything has to be accounted for. So if X to the fifth is my highest exponent, what is the coefficient of X to the fifth? One. What is the coefficient of X to the fourth? Zero, there isn't one, but you have to have a placeholder. So then I have x cubed would be 1. Coefficient of x squared is negative 2. Coefficient of x is negative 12. And then your constant is negative 8. Everybody agree? All right, so let's bring down our first term and synthetically divide. So 1 times 1 is 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 2, <clears throat> 2 is 0. 0 times 1 is 0. When I add this down, is this going to give me a remainder of 0? No. So go ahead and try something else. Let's try negative 1. As soon as you see, oh, wait a second, my remainder is not going to be 0, you can go ahead and go to the next one. So 1, 0, 1, negative 2, negative 12, negative 8. So bring down your 1. What's 1 times negative 1? Negative 1. 0, negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 and negative 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 times negative 1, negative 2. Negative 2 and negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 and 1 is 4. Negative 12 and 4 is what? We'll cut negative 8, right? And then negative 8, negative 1 is positive 8. What's my remainder here? Zero. So what did you guys just discover here? One of your x values, one of your zeros, one of your solutions is negative one. How many are still left to be discovered? 
four. We found one of them. There's four left over. So think about this. This is my resulting polynomial. It always starts with one less degree. So since I start off with x to the fifth, this is my x to the fourth, x cubed, x squared, x, and a constant. So I'm going to go ahead and write this out as x to the fourth minus x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 8 equals 0. <clears throat> Now, what happens here, guys? Can we factor this? Can we group it? Is there a GCF? Wouldn't it be 2x squared? Yep. Thank you, sir. Can I factor? Can I group? Can I take out a GCF? Anything like that? No. So what do you think we have to do again? We got to do P over Q again. In this case, it's, it's again negative 8. So plus, minus 1, 2, 4, and 8. So I'm going to start with positive 1. My coefficients are 1, negative 1, 2, negative 4, negative 8. So bring down my 1, go to the corner. 1 times 1 is 1, negative 1 and 1 is 0. 0 times 1 is 0, 2 plus 0 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2, negative 4 and 2 is negative. Is this going to give me a remainder of 0? No. Is this really, really hard? No. Is it a pain in the butt? Yes, you can say that. That's fine. So 1, negative 1, 2, negative 4, negative 8. <clears throat> Bring down that 1. So 1 times negative 1, negative 1. Negative 1 and negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 and negative 1 is positive 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4, negative 4 is negative 8. Oh, this looks good. Negative <clears throat> 8, negative 1 is positive. So my remainder here is zero. What did you guys just uncover here? What did we discover? That x equals negative one. But didn't I already have one, x equals negative one? Yeah, that's okay, we just have multiplicity. That means when this is graphed, at that point, x equals negative one, the graph is going to bounce. It's gonna to touch it and go the opposite direction. So now what do we have left over? Well. We started off with x to the fourth, so my answer is x cubed. This is x squared. This is x. This is my constant. So you have 1x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 8 equals 0. Now, from this point, guys, could you do p over q again? Could you do synthetic division? Absolutely. But check to see if you can factor it. Can I group these? If I take the first two and the second two, is this going to factor? What can I take out of x cubed and two, negative 2x two squared? Perfect. x squared. Then I'm left with x minus 2. What can I take out of positive 4 and a negative 8? What can I take out? A positive 4, correct? So plus 4, and I'm left with x minus 2. So my new GCF is x minus 2, write it one time out in front, and then x squared plus 4 gets its own parenthesis. Now what do I do at this point? Do I have the difference of perfect squares? No, if that's at x squared minus 4, you could tell me it was x plus 2, x minus 2, but it's not. I don't have difference of perfect squares. So at this point, I could just say, all right, well, I'm going to set each parenthesis equal to 0. So x equals 2 here. And then here, what is x squared? What happens here? What happens if we take the square root? <clears throat> it's x equals, okay, plus minus what? 2 what? I. Why is there an I there? Because there's a negative underneath the radical. So, guys, did we find all five of our answers? Yes. How many of them are real? Three. And how many are imaginary? Two. God bless you. So, if you were to graph this, how many times would this thing touch or cross the x-axis? How many times? One, two, and what? God bless you. Three. You cannot graph <clears throat> on a normal coordinate x, y. You cannot graph imaginary numbers. So this actually has five answers, but only three of them are real. 
So you guys are going to have to be careful about how the directions are asked. This question asks for all of the zeros. If they asked you for only the real, then you would say negative one, negative one, and two. Does that make sense? All right, that's a long problem. I understand that. We can't give you like a ton of them because it'll take too long. But if you look here, it says notice that only the real zeros appear as intercepts, right? We just talked about that. You cannot graph imaginaries. If you throw that in your calculator, it's not going to show you the imaginary. So just be aware of that. All right, <clears throat> look at the next slide. Number one, how many solutions does x to the fourth plus 7x squared minus 144 have? Four. Four solutions. How do you know it's four? It's the highest exponent. Are they all real? You don't know. Are they all? They, they could all be imaginary. You don't know that until you algebraically work it out. You cannot just look at that and say, oh, yeah, you know, everything's whatever. What about here? How many, how many answers? How many solutions? How many zeros? Three. Good. Three zeros. And remember, solutions, zeros, roots, and x-intercepts all mean the same thing. Set the equation equal to zero and solve it. What are the answers? That's what they're asking for. Let's do another one. All right, find all. That means every single one of them, real or imaginary. Pretty or fake, okay? How many answers am I going to find? Three. I know I'm going to have three because my highest exponent is three. Always try, guys. Try, try, try to factor first before you just jump to P over Q. If I <clears throat> were to group these, first two and the last two, is that going to group pretty? No. Oh, so we have to do P over Q. Plus, minus, one, two, three, four, six, and 12. Where am I getting those numbers from? Where did I get those numbers from? The 12, all right? Again, you guys can start with whatever you want. I like to be systematic and just start with positive one. And if I get zero as a remainder, I'm good to go. And then we try to factor. If I don't get zero as a remainder, I try negative one. And then I just keep going. So I have one, seven, 16, and 12. Is everything accounted for? X cubed, X squared, X. Yep. Okay. So one times one is one. Seven plus one is eight. Eight times one is eight. Is this going to give me zero? No. So stop. Try negative one. One, seven, 16, and 12. One times negative one, negative one. Seven and negative one is six. Yeah. Six times negative one, negative six. This gives me 10. Is this going to give me a remainder of zero? No. Okay. Let's try two. I promise you I will not give you one that doesn't work. <clears throat> If you get to that point, then just start again because you made a mistake somewhere, but I won't give you one that doesn't work. 1 times 2 is 2. 7 and 2 is 9. 9 times 2. Is this one going to work? No. So we'll go to negative 2. One times negative 2. Negative 2. 7 minus 2 is 5. 5 times negative 2. Negative 10. 16 minus 10 is 6. Ooh! Six times negative two is negative 12. Does this one work? Okay, good. So we found out that X equals negative two. There's one of my answers. So what do I have left over here? This one, five, and six. Write it out for me as a polynomial. X what? X squared plus five X plus six equals zero. Remember, whatever you start off with, God bless you, you're always good. your resulting polynomial is gonna start with one less. So now we like to see at this point, guys, that we have two options. We are at a quadratic. Do you see that the highest exponent here is a two? You could just jump in and use the quadratic formula, but I would first try to see if this factors. Are there factors of six that will multiply to give me six, but add to give me five? Three and two. X plus two and X plus three. So what are your other two zeros? X equals negative two and x equals negative three. What do we know about those three, or those zeros? They're all what? They're all real, right? There's no imaginaries or anything. Is there multiplicity? 
Yes, where? Um, the vector and the So you have multiplicity at negative 2. So when you graph this, it's going to bounce off of negative 2, but it's going to go through negative 3. It's good to kind of visualize that, guys, so you kind of have that in your mind. All right, let's do the last one. Oh, Lord. This probably isn't going to be a short one. <laughs> let's do it together, and then we're done. I'll let you guys start on your homework. How many answers am I going to have? Five. Ay, yay, yay. All right, there is nothing we can do here other than our P over Q. Luckily, that last number is just a four. So plus, minus one, two, and four, correct? It's not fun when that last number is like 60. <laughs> but let's go ahead and start. Be careful with your signs. I'm going to start with positive one. So I have one X to the fifth, negative three X to the fourth, positive 5x cubed, negative 1, negative 6, and positive 4, correct? Okay, so bring down your 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 3 and 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 and 1 is negative 2. <clears throat> 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 times 1 is 3. Negative 1 and 3 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 6 and 2 is what? Negative 4. Oh, what do we find out here? We lucked out, huh? My remainder is 0. I know that 1 is a factor. So 1 of my solutions is x equals 1. So now we write our resulting polynomial. How would I write this? What's left over? Tell me. 1x what? 1x to the 4th. Good. Minus 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x minus 4 equals 0. And we're in the same boat again. <clears throat> we're going to have to do p over q. Again, our last term is 4, so plus minus 1, 2, and 4. Let's start off with 1. So I have 1, negative 2, 3, 2, and negative 4. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 2 and 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 and 1 is negative 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. <clears throat> 4 times 1 is 4. And this gives us 0. All right, we lucked out again. What does this tell me? x equals 1. I have as a factor again. Just because you had it one time does not mean you won't have it again, guys. That just means you have that same answer twice. It's multiplicity. And then what we have left over here is x what? Cubed, good. It's always one less than what you started with. Minus x squared plus 2x plus 4 equals 0. Now, again, you can just jump to p over q if you want to. But I, at this point, I'm going to just see, wait a second. Does this group? It may not. It may not. That's okay. But <clears throat> it might. So let's just see what happens. What can, can I take out anything from x cubed and x squared? Okay, if I take out an x squared, I'm left with x minus 1, right? Is there anything I can take out of 2x and a positive 4 that's going to leave me with an x minus 1? Oh, man. So what does that mean we have to do? P over Q again. <laughs> so plus, minus, 1, 2, and 4. It's all right. Start with 1 again. So 1, negative 1, 2, and 4. It's a little shorter. Bring down your 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 1 and 1 is 0. 0 times 1 is 0. Is this going to give me a remainder of 0? Nope. So let's just move on. Let's go to negative 1. Again, I have 1, negative 1, 2, and 4. 1 times negative 1, negative 1. Negative 1, negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2, negative 1 is positive 2, correct? What's 2 plus 2? 4. What's 4 times negative 1? Negative 4. So my remainder here is 0. So I found out another one of my answers is x equals negative 1. How many do I have so far? How many have I found? Three. How many are left? Two. Okay, so let's look what we have here. This is a quadratic. This is x squared minus 2x plus 4 equals 0. So you have two options at this point. Can you wait like two minutes? I'm almost done. <clears throat> Thank you. You have two options at this point, guys. You can jump into the quadratic formula, or you can say, hey, let me see if this factors. You can only use the quadratic formula when you have squared, x squared. 
So what are the factors of four that multiply to give me four but add to give me a negative two? Is anything going to work? No. So now what do we have to do? You have to do the quadratic. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. The hardest part about the quadratic formula is making sure that you have everything correct and your signs are right. I like to go ahead and say, okay, let me write out what my a value is, what my b value is, what my c value is, just so I don't make a mistake. What's my a? It's the number in front of x squared. One, good. What's my b value? Negative two, and then what's my c? Four, all right, so let's just plug everything in. So I have negative, negative two. Some of you are like, can I just write a positive? Sure. I just don't want to miss any signs, so I'm just going to write it all out. So plus minus the square root of negative two squared minus four times one times four all over two times one. Did I write everything correctly? Check me. It's Monday morning. All right. Minus a negative gives me a positive. Perfect. Plus minus. What is negative 2 squared? What's negative 2 squared? Positive 4. It's not a trick question. Just making sure. What's negative 4 times 1 times 4? Good. Minus 16. I hear you with 12. And then 2 times 1? All right. One, the beauty of the quadratic formula is every time you simplify, it gets a little smaller, a little smaller. All right, so then we're going to come down here, and I have 2 plus or minus. What is 4 minus 16, guys? Negative 12, right? This should set off a bell and a whistle. What is wrong? It's imaginary. It's imaginary. When you guys go to break this down, all right, think about it. You have 4 times 3 times negative 1. So when we go to simplify... I have my 2 out here in front. What is the square root of 4? 2, so that's going to come out in front. Do I know the square root of 3? No. Do I know the square root of negative 1? What's the letter? I. <clears throat> now, when we get here, guys, what you need to understand is this is the same thing as 2 over 2 plus minus 2i root 3 over 2. When you simplify, that 2 goes into both the first term and the second term. So when we simplify this, if you want to write it separate like that so you can see, but when you simplify, this is 1 plus or minus i square root of 3. That's my other x values. Are there two x values there? Yes, it's 1 plus i square root of 3 and 1 minus i square root of 3. So, yes, that was a long problem. It took us over seven minutes to do. But we found all five of the solutions. You can go to the bathroom now, babe. Thanks for waiting. Um, we found all five solutions. Three of them are real. So three of them will touch the x-axis, and the other two are imaginary. You guys with me? Okay, good. All right, I'm going to stop for today. You guys can go ahead, you have like 15 minutes, go ahead, if you wanna to work together on the homework, that's fine, I don't mind, and then we'll finish up um, the next part tomorrow. Sound good?